Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to go over uh, a four corner stall offense. This is used if you are, um, if you're playing against a team and you're up and you're trying to run some clock out. If you know that uh, maybe, you know, you're trying to get the defense to come out and play you man to man to where you, know, you can get some easier looks at the basket and not shooting the ball particularly well. But typically we run this end of the quarter. Um, we're up by a couple points. You know, or if we you know, if a team comes out and plays man-to-man, -man, we know they're over-aggressive, we could actually run this as our offense and look for some easy buckets, look to attack the rim, or if we're winning late in the game and we need some time to you know, run the clock out and have the other team foul us and then make some bad decisions and just kind of manage the game that way, that's what happens. So typically it's a four-corner offense. we got four people in the corners. However, our guards usually start off a little shallow here and then pop up to receive the ball is what happens okay so <clears throat> the ball uh, on this video you won't see the ball go to in the corners over here to the bigs but the ball can go to the bigs in the corners if you need to you just really won't see it in this video i wanted to show you really the guard action that happens here and the stall and the continuity of it and uh, this situation here you want some guys on here that can dribble the ball and also good decision makers back here in the post who are strong with the ball and understand how to pivot, uh, not turn their back to the basket. You, if you have any players that are really flustered on any type of pressure, you don't want them in this situation here. So we're gonna go over that. Uh, one has the ball, and we're gonna throw some defense out on there. Let's see here, get some defense on them, and uh, let's start it off. So one dribbles over to the corner. What's gonna happen is whatever side he dribbles to or she dribbles to, the person that's there is gonna clear and come to the top. And then this person's going to end up coming up here. So you see two comes to the top. And the key things we want to keep the ball, try to keep it in the middle of the floor. So now the ball's going to go to the middle. Okay. So now we have one corner, two corner, three corner, four corner. And we typically always have a middleman here, right? So what will happen is if the ball is attacked, if they dribble over into the gap, then the person that they dribbled to the side two will fill here. If they pass it to that person, then the, the person that is dribbling the ball in the middle loops around, takes their place, and they rotate to the middle. So let's see the continuity there. In this situation, we penetrate the gap. One goes to the top. We pop it to the top, and now we reset. Two goes to the corner. In this situation, ball's passed to three. One's going to loop around and take three's place. Three's going to dribble to the middle, take one's place. In this situation, ball's passed to two. Three loops around, two takes the place here, three takes the place there. After a while, these defenders here, I can tell you are gonna kind of go to sleep. Four and five are gonna be like, you know, what the heck? So <clears throat> every now and again, what we like to do is like to send our bigs and we kind of give them the freedom of when to do this. And they should be able to realize when the defense gets more aggressive up here and you notice that the guards are kind of having to work a little bit harder, we like to send one of the bigs up and then we can create a back door off of here. As you see, four comes up here, ball goes to the middle. Now in this situation, what we like to do is the side that's most open, which would be this side here, is we send that opposite guard back door cutting, and typically we'll get a wide open layup from there. If he doesn't go, then five could end up just coming over here, posting up, and a little high-low action for an easy layup. But, uh, and also, during the game, if, again, if you have the ball, if one has the ball and has to dribble over here, they can pop it to five, pop it right back there, get the ball to the middle and reset. So your four and five don't just have to stand there. Um, you can actually make them more involved in the um, in the offense as well. But that's just kind of the gist of it. Again, this is a four-corner stall offense. We call it four because we know it signals, um, you know, it signals to, uh, you know, to, to get it out or, Actually, we used to call it four in the middle school. Now at the high school, they actually call it five out because it shows that five people are out. So when we say five out, this actually signals the offense to um, to stall and look to attack if it's there. So and, and offense has to know, like your team has to know the difference of are you playing stall ball or are you in your attack mode? And uh, typically if we run it, you know, mid quarter um, or at the beginning of a game, we're in attack mode because the game just started. We realize they're in man-to-man. -man. We know that they're over aggressive. They're not helping and they're chasing their men all over. We'll run five out there. If it's at the end of the game 
and we're up by like five points with a minute left, we're going to call five out, and we're going to look to stall, stall ball and run the clock and just protect it and try to get fouled, make our free throws, or run the clock out. So, anyway, guys, all I got for you in this one. Let me know your comments below. Other than that, we'll catch you in the next one.